Hi, I'm Pam and I'm here to talk about video games. It's time for some more suggestions of games that I think are great that you should consider trying on Game Pass. If you don't know, Game Pass is a monthly subscription service for Xbox and Windows that gives you access to a large library of games, with new ones being added all the time, as well as some older ones being taken off. So here are seven games of a variety of different genres that I really liked. All of these can be played on Game Pass and are available as of May 2021. Haven from the Game Bakers is a lovely game where you travel around a mysterious abandoned planet, exploring, collecting, and surviving. You play you and Kay, two young adults who ran away from their home planet because they were in love and both were set to be paired off with other people. You'll spend most of your time exploring the planet as you glide across its surface looking for ways to fix your broken spaceship and collect things that you can use for crafting or cooking. You can switch between the two characters and can either control both on your own or have a second player join you. You'll also be running into hostile creatures and combat is based on timing the actions of both characters to hurt and then subdue each enemy. Haven is quite story heavy and sometimes functions like a visual novel as you see you and Kay conversing, flirting, and discussing their situation. It's really cute with adorable little touches like how they'll hold hands while gliding around or embrace if left idle. The way you move around the world is so smooth and engaging. It lets you clear the corruption from this planet and reveal its stunning beauty. The game has an absolutely gorgeous color palette and is full of alien vistas that I was constantly wanting to screenshot. Also, the electro synthwave soundtrack by Danger is amazing. Haven is around 12 to 15 hours long and is just really nice. Developed by Phobia Game Studios, Carry On puts you in a secret underground research facility where one of the creatures there, an amorphous tentacled monster, has escaped and now runs amok. And that monster is you. Starting out small and not too powerful, you roam the facility to find ways to grow and increase your abilities. Soon you'll be able to shoot out tentacles to open doors, turn invisible to hide from armed guards, rip scientists limb from limb, and even take over human hosts to make them do your bidding. You can transform between three different sizes, each with access to different skills, in order to puzzle your way through the facility towards your final mysterious goal. Along the way, you'll see flashbacks that help tell the story of what's going on here. Carry On is a somewhat claustrophobic metroidvania with lots of corridors to go down and tunnels to squeeze through. There's no map, so you'll need to learn your way around, but you do have some abilities to help you with that as well. The game's pixel art is impressive. It's detailed and harsh, with lots of blood spraying and body parts flying. Carry On is about 5 hours long and is a good choice if you've ever wanted to be the shapeless monster consuming all on its path. Yakuza 0 from Sega is one of the most fun and ridiculous games you'll ever play. It acts as a prequel to the original game, but also totally works as an introduction to the series. You play as both Kazuma Kiryu and Goro Majima, one a low-ranking Yakuza member who gets falsely accused of murder, and one an ex-Yakuza who now manages a cabaret club. Each of these characters can freely roam around their respective cities, getting into lots of fist fights, helping out people in side quests, eating at all the restaurants, going to the disco or karaoke club, playing arcade games, and becoming the kings of real estate and cabaret. The story is thrilling, full of intrigue, backstabbing, unlikely allies, and other twists and turns. Every time I thought it couldn't get more exciting, the game took me by surprise again. And in addition to the drama, it's hilarious. It's so video gamey. Special moves during fights are over the top and money flies out of your opponents when they take a hit. 
Names of people and places are presented with ostentatious text, and Majima and Kiryu are constantly performing dramatic flourishes as they buy a new property or even sit down to write a postcard. This game has a bit of everything, and I recommend it if you're looking for a great story, memorable characters, and some of the silliest side quests you've ever seen. I'd say it's about 30 hours long for a bare-bones run of the game, but if you want to do and see everything, it'll take you a long, long time. Asobo Studios' A Plague Tale Innocence is a great combination of stealth, action, puzzle-solving, and horror. You play Amicia Darun, a young woman whose life is turned upside down when her parents are killed, and she must protect her younger brother Hugo, in the middle of both an inquisition and a plague that features human-devouring rats. The two need to learn to rely on each other to sneak past, distract, and sometimes kill their enemies. You'll also meet a few other friendly faces along the way who at times will travel with you, adding their skills to yours. Having a traveling companion is great in this type of game. Mechanically, you get two characters with differing skills with which to solve the puzzle of each encounter. Narratively, the characters' back-and-forth dialogue lets the player in on their pasts and what they're thinking. There are some real standout moments in the game, usually involving hordes of rats crawling over each other, trying to devour you, held off only by the torchlight you carry. But figuring out how to use the environment to get past them, or better yet, how to turn the rats on the Inquisition forces that are after you makes for some great gameplay. The game is graphically very beautiful, and the story, though horrific at times, is also rather sweet. A Plague Tale Innocence is around 12 to 15 hours long and is a great choice if you like cinematic adventures. New Super Lucky's Tale by Playful Studios is an adorable platformer where you play a fox named Lucky, who is on a quest to collect pages to protect the Book of Ages. It's quite the collectathon with all kinds of items to find and secrets to discover in order to open up new worlds. While the majority of the game is in 3D, with a fully controllable camera, there are also a bunch of other types of levels to change things up and keep things interesting. Some levels are 2D platformers, even auto-running ones. There are also puzzle segments like putting Lucky into a marble and taking him through a maze, or sliding box puzzles. Lucky is fun to control and can defeat enemies with his tail or by jumping on them, or by burrowing underground and coming up from underneath. This isn't really a game that pushes the genre forward, but it is a very solid, polished, and fun experience that never gets frustrating or tiresome. If you played the original release of this, just called Super Lucky's Tale, you should find the better camera controls and additional content do improve the experience quite a bit. New Super Lucky's Tale is a nice and concise 8 or so hours long, and is a fun, if not overly challenging, platformer. Eleven Bit Studios Frostpunk is a city builder where you're trying to keep a group of survivors alive during a worldwide volcanic winter. Taking place in the 19th century, you build your city around a giant generator, which is the only hope for survival. You'll need to harvest wood, coal, and metal for building. You'll have to set up housing, places to gather or produce food, and take care of the sick. Expeditions can be sent out to look for other survivors or find materials that you can use. As leader, you'll also have to establish rules to keep order within your city and try to give the citizens purpose so they don't fall into hopelessness. People will die of hypothermia, people will starve, and if things get too bad, they'll depose you and send you out into the snow to die. The game includes multiple scenarios to play out, each with a set ending, but also an endless mode if you just want to survive for as long as you can. Frostpunk is a game that feels cold, with amazing sound effects of howling winds and blowing snow, and frosty visuals to match. 
Each scenario is a few hours long, but you can put a lot of time into this one if you choose. If you like games that are honestly a bit of a downer, which I really do for some reason, this one will surely put you into some difficult and disheartening situations. I'd personally play this one on PC if you have the choice, but it handles pretty well on console too. Let's take it back a few decades for the last one. ID Software's Doom is one of the most ubiquitous games out there, and for good reason. If you've been playing video games since the 90s or before, you've probably played a shareware version of this at some point. And if you haven't, there's no time like the present. The 25th Anniversary Edition includes the game's original three episodes, plus the expansion fourth episode. The game's early 3D graphics hold up pretty well, and the action is fast and frenetic. Demons will be coming at you in droves as you explore military facilities, Martian moons, and eventually, hell itself. It strikes such a good balance of making you feel like the uber-powerful Doom guy, while also occasionally giving you a bit of a scare from a wall opening up to reveal unexpected demons. Each of the levels is fun to explore, find various power-ups and secrets, and find your way out of. And the first-person shooting, while simple, is still immensely gratifying. If you like first-person shooters and haven't played this before, you owe it to yourself to see this immensely influential game. And if you have played it, it's still fun to replay. Doom is around 6 hours long and recommended if you just want some good demon-killing action. So those are seven games that I think you should consider trying out on Game Pass. There's a little bit of everything here. Action, simulation and decision making, romance, monsters. Hopefully you found something that you're interested in. And I'll be back in a couple months to come up with some more suggestions for you. If you want to see more, check out my last set of recommendations. Or another of my videos. I have a Patreon if you want to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.